y'all what is up it's your girl ej and welcome to the recap y'all now today we're going to be talking about the family business season four episode six entitled homecoming now on this video we're going to focus on sasha and paris let's get into it y'all Okay, y'all, so this episode starts out incredibly sad. You know, um, I finally had to succumb to the fact that, you know, Sasha is actually gone, that Sasha Duncan has died. This is the direction that the show has taken, and it looks like she's gone, you know? So, you know, I just was like, okay, got to get out of this denial stage, and it is what it is. So anyway, y'all, on this uh, particular episode, we're going to start out with everybody saying goodbye to Sasha Duncan so I really wanted to say that they really did a really good job the way that they did this episode this episode made you you know feel really connected to everything that was going on I mean you really felt all of the emotions from the song as everybody starts to say goodbye so we're gonna start out with you know um Chippy and LC, you know, they're getting out of the car. They're getting ready uh, to go to the funeral. Um, and you're going to see that everybody has kind of gathered. Security is definitely high uh, here at this funeral service. And they just want to make sure that everybody's safe, but, you know, that they get to say goodbye to, you know, their, their niece, their cousin, you know, whatever the respective uh, relationship is. Now we are going to see Nene uh, basically just kind of break down here. She's like, look, Curtis had, not Curtis. Uh, she's like, look, uh, Kenny has something to do with this. Like a mother knows, you know, and Curtis is adamant that he doesn't believe that Kenny had anything to do with this, not Sasha, you know, maybe some of this other stuff, but not this particular thing. And then, you know, his sister Lauren is like, you didn't see him. You didn't see how he wanted to kill me. So... Um, I don't know. At this point, I'm just like, so if we know that there's a problem, why are we still not saying anything? Like, I just still don't have that much respect for this whole situation. Like, I understand that you want your son to be saved. Like, you don't want your son to die. But everybody else around you is dying because of your son and your husband. And they have no clue what's going on. But you have this information that could potentially help them uh to be safer you know what I'm saying to know what they're looking for to know who their enemy is it's nothing like having an enemy and not knowing who that enemy is so I just feel like you know this is just this they doing too much although I understand why I just I don't like it so then we have Donna of course uh who's coming to say goodbye to her daughter and it feels like you know these last few episodes we've had a lot of clips of <laughs> Junior and Donna together and and you see how much Junior cares for her in the, you know, the type of relationship that he seems to have developed with her. And, you know, as we're looking in, you know, we all know that, of course, you know, that they truly are more than just auntie and nephew. And it's just really nice to see the way Junior is there for her to help her through this. Because, you know, the, don't nobody like Donna. But this is her daughter. She did lose her daughter. And they were trying to... Uh, reconcile their relationship uh because we all know that donna has never you know been much of a mom to uh sasha but you know it's still her daughter now we're gonna see orlando say goodbye to his cousin uh we're also gonna see you know london come out but london isn't even gonna be able to make it all the way you know to the casket she kind of just breaks down before she ever makes it there we're gonna see sonya and rio saying goodbye you know to and then we're gonna see curtis lauren and nini also saying their goodbyes as well as you know little vegas aka nevada he's gonna be saying goodbye and then we're gonna see lc and chippy of course say goodbye and then um, you know, they had this amazing shot of LC, you know, standing over the casket. And I just thought this was just like everything that they did in this episode, like just keeping it real. And I'm never one to get into, you know, video or any type of like the creative part behind the show, uh, per se. But I think that they did such an amazing job with the way that they created this moment for the fans like you know it's it's sad that we have to say goodbye to Sasha but it really feels like they put a lot of detail and thought into what 
people would want to see and and they connected it with feelings you know what i'm saying like the visual connects you with the feeling i mean honestly if you didn't have like a moment of where you were like man this is really emotionally like you're you're saying goodbye to this character i mean it felt real is what i'm trying to say so anyway, y'all, uh, last but not least, of course, Donna's going to come in and she's going to say, uh, you know, goodbye to her daughter. And, you know, what would any funeral be or any event be with the Duncans without a little bit of drama? You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, the Duncans, you know, that it's always something going on there. And of course, your girl Donna is going to come up to Chippy and she's like, look, hey, this is my seat. I need you. I need you to move. You know what I'm saying? And Chippy's just like, uh, what makes you think this is your seat? And she's like, you know, contrary to what, you know, people believe this was my daughter. And, you know, at this moment, you know, if you have not been following the show or if you've never read the books, uh, one thing about they 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 go into great detail about Donna and Sasha's relationship in the books. We learned that. Uh, of course, Lou raised Sasha and the uh, TV show also makes you make that assumption as well. And um, you learn that, you know, that Donna was just kind of out and about, you know what I'm saying? That she was always chasing money and chasing men and she was never really there for Sasha. And that's why they have that they had that strain on their relationship is because she was never you know, a mom to her, but Chippy was always there for her. And Chippy was a motherly figure to her. And that's why she makes this statement that contrary to what people think, I'm her mother, you know what I'm saying? So anyway, Elsie's just like, hey, let's just move. And then, you know, your girl Donna had to take it up a notch. And it's like, can you move over one more seat so Junior can sit, you know? So yeah, so this is going to be interesting when this whole thing does come out about Junior being Donna's biological child along with Elsie. Because I don't really know how Junior's going to take it. And I don't know how they're going to present it. I wish that, you know, they would present it to where they sit him down like they tried to before. Uh, but you already know that it's probably going to be something a little more dramafied with this family. You know what I'm saying? It's probably going to come out a very different way. So anyway, um, everybody's going to come and pay their respects. And as usual, these guys are looking sharp. You know what I'm saying? Senior Cruz. I can't ever remember what this other guy's name is, but he always has on these great hats. Like, I love his outfits. And then uh, when Sebastian pops up, Sebastian is like, look, you know, I feel like we're like sitting ducks. And Senior Cruz is like, no, you know, LC got this on lock. You know, and he's just like, nah, nah. And I'm just thinking to myself, dude, like, I know that if people, if I was at a table, you know what I'm saying, this type of table, this type of powerful table, and I know that people are dropping, there's no way I'm not wearing a bulletproof vest every single wear that I go. I mean, if I could wear a bulletproof helmet, I probably would too. Like, there's just no way you're going to get me caught slipping like that. And that's, of course, what your boys in your cruise is like, like, you know, we got, we got our hardware on, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Saying. and Sebastian is just looking like okay uh you know they've seen my face I gotta go so you know Sebastian is just like he's scared you know he's like a Duncan assassin has died and then the other two people like they got your boy shook so anyway probably one of the biggest and best moments uh, of a bittersweet moment was when your girl Paris showed up, y'all. Paris showed up like none other from the car to the outfit to her entire entrance. It was in true Paris, you know, uh, fashion, you know what I'm saying? And Paris shows up. Nobody knows that she's coming. And she comes to say goodbye to her cousin, you know, like, whether or not, you know, these two got along because they were back and forth. They were cousins and they were in competition. You know what I'm saying? And that's the relation. That's how their relationship was. We all know that Paris is a little bit spoiled. You know what I'm saying? And she loves to be competitive. But these two had a, you know, a a really close relationship, regardless of them having their you know, they're little spats. I mean, they were more sisterly. That's how sisters do. You know, they they have their differences, but at the same time, you're not gonna mess with this one and you're not gonna mess with that one because they each gonna have they're gonna have each other's back. So um 
Paris shows up. She says goodbye to her cousin. And then she goes over to her mom and her mom is like, you know, welcome home. And it almost felt, you know, like how the prodigal son, you know, how they say the prodigal son returns home. Not saying that Paris was the prodigal child or anything like that, although we could say, but not saying that. But it just felt like this welcoming back of someone who's been gone for so long. And it's like, yes, you're welcome. You know, come back into the fold. And uh, she you know, she's talking to her dad and her dad is just like, you know, she's gone, Paris, you know, she's gone. And she just lets him know like, hey, you know, it's okay. I'm here. You know what I'm saying? And we're going to find out who did this. And they embrace and it's just such a special moment to kind of see these characters coming back together. Um, because I think that this is what the show the show needs to have either a Paris or a Sasha. If we're not going to have one or the other, it feels like the show would be void with with having neither of them. So I'm really glad that they brought uh, Paris back into the show since we're having to lose Sasha. Now, I would have preferred not to have lost Sasha uh, to death. You know what I'm saying? Like, at least have an opening where she can come back in. You know, I'm kind of still hoping for this whole thing where she it's not really her. Like, that the body was just too badly damaged for them to really, really, really know who it was. And that, you know, at some point this DNA test is going to come back and it's, it's not going to be her. Like, I'm really hoping for that. But at this point, I think I just have to come to the realization that this is probably not going to play out this way and that, you know, that the character is gone. So there's that. So anyway, y'all, your boy Elijah, of course, is going through it. You know, Elijah is having a hard time dealing with this. He's lost the love of his life. Uh, and, you know, in theory, he lost a love that he never probably even saw coming. Like nobody saw Elijah and Sasha ever getting together. This was such, you know, that the couples that were on two extreme sides of the spectrum, but yet they found each other and they found love. And, um, you know, it's truly sad that Elijah has to lose, you know, this person that he never got a chance to propose to. He never got a chance to show her that he wanted to take this to the next level and that, you know, he wanted to be in her life forever. But, you know, Elijah is a religious man and he does realize that, you know, he has to let go. So, you know, he says his goodbyes to her and, you know, he knows that he has to mourn and get through this situation. So y'all, our girl Paris uh, is definitely back and she's ready to get to work. You know, um, as she here, as she's here, you know, as, as after the funeral, she's like, hey, you know, I'm going to find out who did this, you know, and she's like, you know, where do I start? And the only thing I can think of is looking at that scene, like when she's asking, where does she start? I'm like, Sonia, like, okay, like, here's your opening to say anything. Like, I realize that some are going to say it's not the time or the place, but it's been past time for this entire conversation to happen. But in this very moment, I feel like, you know, maybe Sonia can say, hey, y'all, there's something that I really need to talk to y'all about. There's something that I really need to tell y'all so that maybe they can move to another location and that she can finally give them this information so that they are not as Sebastian's says sitting ducks you know what I'm saying because this information that she has is very important but for whatever reason she is just sitting on it and I have yet to understand that and it's really making this entire character seem so sketch you know what I'm saying it's just making her look she just is just not a good look at for her at all and I would really like to know like what is her reasoning for not saying anything because we all know that eventually it's going to come out but I really hope they dive into the fact of why you never said anything why did you wait this long to say anything there's that so anyway, your girl Paris is going to recruit Nevada and Curtis into helping her uh, figure out Sasha's last steps. You know, she, Nevada is a whiz with these computers and he can hack anything. And so she's going to have him trying to get the phone records. And then she's going to have Curtis using his uh, Bounty Honey connections to find out what the streets are saying. And in my mind, I'm just like, OK, so Curtis, you 
you don't think that Kenny had anything to do with this. But at this time, I still feel like the information about Kenny and Larry is pertinent because we still don't know if they're working with anybody else. You know what I'm saying? Like, like they don't know rather we know what they're doing, but they don't know the whole dynamics of what Kenny and Larry have going on yet. They're holding on to this information. And I'm just like, I don't understand at this point, like why everybody is holding on to this information that they have that they need to be given up so that people can protect themselves. And so that they can at least stay ahead of it, but it is what it is. I get it. So anyway, your girl, uh, Paris is going to go and visit Elijah. You know, she's going to visit Elijah because he's the person that, you know, Sasha spent the most of her time with. And so she's retracing Sasha's steps. She's trying to find any information, any clues as to who could have done this. Now we are going to find out uh, from Orlando that, you know, this was not just any old attack. You know what I'm saying? Orlando was like, this was very personal. The person who did this to Sasha stabbed her over 40 times, which makes it very personal and not just like a hit. Now we do know that Sasha was an assassin, you know what I'm saying? And she probably has a lot of enemies, but nine times out of 10 being an assassin, most people probably don't even know who killed the person that that was killed. So I don't know. It's, it feels like there's going to be a lot to unturn here in order to figure out who killed Sasha, because some of your, some of my biggest guesses, I'm it, they don't actually make sense anymore as we get more into the episode. Paris of course is going to go visit her brother Rio, you know, in true uh, Rio and uh, Paris fashion. And they're going to have a couple of drinks and they're going to kind of reminisce uh, on their cousin because this typically would have been a Sasha Rio Paris thing. You know, when they're together, they're together. They're this trio. Um, and, you know, I think it just hits them that, you know, she's gone. You know what I'm saying? And I think in this moment, you know, Paris is even more determined to find out who killed her cousin. Now, she is going to go see your girl Donna because everybody's like, okay, the only person who knew about where we were going was Donna, you know, and then who has the most to gain from this Donna, because she has Lou's money. Because if you remember, Lou left everything to Sasha and, you know, Donna wasn't feeling that. That was one of the reasons why they were into it heavy uh, was because of that. And, uh, so, of course, Paris is going to show up to see Donna. I mean, if you're going to investigate something, if you're going to do it right, you got to go to each and every source, each and every clue. You got to follow the leads. You have to. So, you know, she's a lead. Now, in my opinion, I definitely don't think Donna had anything to do with it. Um, I think in this particular case that Donna is is good. Like, I don't think that she had anything to do with this. I think this was definitely someone else. However, Donna does get a little bit out of pocket, which is funny because when Larry was in there talking all this shit, you was scared. But when Paris come up in there, you actually try to talk noise to her. And I'm like, you do know what your daughter and her do, right? Like you do know what their thing is. And I was like, okay, so she talking mad noise. And then uh, Paris is like, look, you know, out of respect for you, uh, losing your daughter, I'm gonna let you have that one, but don't get it twisted. You know what I'm saying? My mama is Chippy Duncan and I remember way she whooped your ass. I will take this thing and I will jug it up. I was like, whoa, 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 wait a minute, Paris. <laughs> but anyway, I was like, Paris is back y'all and I'm loving it. And I'm so here for the drama for real, for real. Like I am loving the fact that Paris is here. Yeah. So that's what's up with the family business season four. Episode six, Homecoming. Did you guys like the way that they sent Sasha off? Did you think that this was a good emotionally felt uh, episode? Were you happy to see Paris come back? And what are your thoughts on who could have possibly killed Sasha? Until next time, guys. Peace.